Okay, I watch sports here with Steve Orozco at uh, Smash Global 5, man. Five uh, successful yeah, events. Yeah, buddy. Tell us about it, man. Tell us about this one. This one's actually really special to me. Um, it's always a big deal to honor somebody, you know, and with it being award season, I get to honor Steven Seagal. I mean, that's literally the legend, if you ask me. I mean, yeah, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, John claude Van Damme, like as an 80s kid, like those are the people yeah, that yeah. you looked up to. We all wanted to be those people. And what drives me crazy, I tell people all the time, is that these guys get no recognition in Hollywood. They don't get uh, Oscars, they don't get Golden Globes, right? But they're the most iconic individuals that actually bring the most box office numbers for Hollywood. If you took those guys out of Hollywood, like I know Meryl Streep said, she said, uh, you have nothing but uh, NFL, football, yeah. football, and MMA. Well, if you take all those guys out of Hollywood, you have nothing but a Broadway musical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I appreciate all the arts and all the actors, but I'll tell you what, I never wanted to be Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic or Adrian Brody in fucking piano. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Leo Dye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I want to be like Steven Seagal in The Shipping Under Siege or Van Damme in Bloodsport. Like, we like envisioned that when we were kids or, or Rocky fighting Drago. Like, I wanted to be those people. You know, so they actually made direct impacts in my life. So, if somebody can do that to somebody else, they should be getting awarded for that. Speak on the Meryl Streep's comments. I mean, yeah. uh, obviously she kind of said it. Uh, obviously her art is, is different than martial arts, but yeah. it was definitely a, a lack of respect for the actual martial arts. I mean, it is artistry in there. I mean, yes. so speak on kind of what you thought when, when she said that and, and your reaction to it. You know, I wasn't, ups I wasn't too upset. I just felt like she's very uneducated, you know? Um, most people that don't have never probably never even watched MMA before. She doesn't know what the guys go through. You've watched, you've gone and I remember seeing the video. You go and see Cub Swanson. Like you watch these guys in camp. The sacrifices, the, the cutting, the cutting of weight, or what we do to our families, the studying, the three times a day training. Like what we go through is probably more than any actor goes through. You know, and I saw an amazing clip on Facebook that Denzel Washington. He said, uh, "It's just acting. Let's be real. It's just acting." It's easy. We're blessed to do it, you know. Well, this isn't really blessed. It's not. I don't feel blessed to fight and kill my body, you know. But we choose to do it because we actually love it. It's a passion. Yeah, it's a love. It's a love. It's a love. Let, let's talk a little MMA, man. Uh, big fight coming up uh, next weekend: Tyrone Woodley versus uh, Thompson, part yeah. two. T tell me what you thought about the first fight. It was very close. Yeah, could have been being a draw. And could have the second one. Though. It could have went either way. I. If you can go either way, you gotta get to the champ. It's just a fact, you know. And I'm a, I'm a Woodley fan. You know, he's pretty cool. But I do like Tom. I like, I do like Wonderboy too, though. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. The second go around, I don't see how Wonderboy could win because Tyrone's already seen that that karate. Once you see it, you kind of understand it. You know, you got to train for. The problem with all these people that are Taekwondo experts and karate guys. You don't train that. You don't see that in the gym when you're sparring. You know, so he's seen it. He knows what he has to do. I think he's been training with Sage a lot too. Sage has some good striking. Really good striking. He's a good uh, mimic for for Thompson for sure. Easily, not as long, but he's really, but he's really good. Tell us uh, the under or the co-main event, uh, Khabib versus uh, Tony Ferguson, Woo! man, right? <laughs> Shit, that's not that's not for a belt, but that is more of a main event if you ask me. I got Khabib in that one. I think Tony Ferguson is a monster. But man, when I saw Khabib's last fight when he fought uh, was it Michael Johnson, uh, Michael Johnson, yeah. Oh man, he. <laughs> He destroyed him on the ground. It was like amateur hour. And Michael Johnson is a beast too. After he was so, they were talking to him on the floor, he was talking yeah. to Dana between rounds. Yeah, I, he's amazing. He's amazing. Either one of those guys beat you, Connor. I'm sorry. I'm a big <laughs> fan, all right? But they both beat you. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that. Connor, name in, name in, uh, in the news a lot, but yeah. talking about fighting <laughs> Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Does that happen? How, what happens if it does happen? No, no, I'm It's all about the money. It's got to happen. Um, it's amazing for the sport. Connor, you're a marketing genius. I appreciate you for it. Thank you. You definitely have done good at bridging the gap between the two sports, which is what I want to do. I'm trying to get the boxing community into the sport. He's getting the whole globe interested in both sports at the same time, which is crazy. I love it. Well, what happens in the fight, though? It's not even on the same planet. The timing is different. I can go to any MMA gym in the world and spar with 
other guys, no problem. Put me in wild card with the pro guys. It's, it's night and day. Like I can keep no, up, but <laughs> the timing is different, the speed is different, the turning over punches, the power, everything is just different. The footwork, everything. Dan, how are you doing, man? How are you, brother? Chavez Canelo, man. Press conference has been going on this whole week. Yes. What do you think about that fight? What do you think about that fight? And also, what's your opinion on the whole weight issue? How Canelo didn't want to go to 160 for Triple G. Now he's at 164 and a half. I wouldn't want to go to fight G Triple G either. <laughs> Triple G is a monster. Come on now. Um, I got Canelo in that fight. You know, Chavez hasn't really proved anything. To me. He hasn't proved that dedication and commitment. He has big, big shoes to fill with his father, which is a difficult struggle. I can imagine being his son, or Michael Jordan's son, or like a Bo Jackson son, you know? But he doesn't have, he doesn't want it, I don't feel like. No, wants it. No, a beast. Well, did you see that they uh, decided to bet each other's purses on the win? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, they just yesterday cool. they decided that they, they, they were kind of getting heated on the television show, and uh, Canelo was like, what do you want to bet? Chavez was like, well, the purse. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. So they bet each other's purse, like shook hands, all that. I love that. Right? I love that. That's, <laughs> that's what he's called odds right there. I love that. Man, I love this event. Steve, thank you so much for putting it on, man. And t t tell the fans where they can find you, social media, all that. Smashglobal.com, Instagram I'll Smash Global, you. Twitter Smash Global, Facebook Smash Global events. Follow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs>